Welcome back to week number four, unit number three. It is about how to check whether downtime optimization is required. My name is Boris Rubart. I'm working as a product manager for the software update manager or the SUM tool. And I will focus on the aspect of downtime in the system conversion process. So the agenda is when is downtime optimization required? It is required if the experienced downtime is longer than the required downtime. So you see experienced downtime, it is about your experience with the first system conversion runs. In part one, we focus on the parts that influence the downtime. There are some uh, parts that influence the downtime and some properties of the source system that influence this. In part two, we will focus on the three approaches we have to optimize the downtime. So the, having a look at the overall process of the technical conversion, you see blocks in green, these are uptime processing, like some uptime processing. We have a ramp down, we have a technical some downtime with specific parts that I will explain in a minute. And we have some post activities and especially FI and ML data conversion. You see, the overall business downtime is influenced not only by the sum as such, but it is influenced by things like business validation or regression tests. So we always have to distinguish between the business downtime and the technical downtime that is influenced, for example, by the software update manager. As part of the sum downtime, you see a portion that is related to the migration assuming that the source system is not yet running on HANA database. So that is the database migration part. The second part is the update part. That is the new software, new software components or updated software components. And the third part is what we call the conversion or data conversion. That is something new compared to the old world of the business suite. The data conversion is the transfer of the table content from the old tables to the new tables that are part of the new data model inside SAP S4HANA. This data conversion takes time, takes downtime, and you see only a portion of this is really executed by the software update manager. There are things like the financial data conversion that has to be executed after the sum run by respective entries in the IMG, in the implementation guide. That is the overall view on the aspects of the downtime blocks, partially by the sum execution and partially be by other activities. Now, properties of the source system. On this slide, you have uh, left-hand side the source system that is transferred into an SAP S4HANA system. And again, migration in case that the source is not yet running on HANA. And two red blocks, again downtime, for the data conversion. Now, of course, it's uh, easy to say the database size of the source system is an influencing factor. The bigger the source database is, the longer the migration and the data conversion happens. But other things are important as well. What is the portion of the tables that are affected by the new data model? That is important, especially for the data conversion part. So it's not enough to estimate the source database size to get an understanding on the downtime duration. Other things are system performance for the migration, but as well for the data conversion, the performance of the application server is important. And last aspect, we have the quality of data. Are there any issues in the data? Why is this relevant for the downtime? Well, we have to focus on the financial data conversion now. That is, again, not part of the SUM standard technical conversion. If you run this procedure on a sandbox system, you will experience issues coming up in this block of the financial data conversion. And you have to fix these issues before you can continue the data conversion. You run this on your sandbox and it's during downtime. So any issues coming up will prolong the downtime, but only on your sandbox system. Afterwards, you will fix all these issues in your productive system. So for the productive run, this should not influence the downtime. 
The general statement that we see on bottom of this slide is the second conversion run, for example, on your sandbox system will always be faster due to the experience that you have gained, due to uh, issues not coming up. So a general statement is you should not decide on your project plan before you have one or two conversion runs on your sandbox already executed. That's important. Imagine that you find out that you have an issue with the downtime, it's too long for uh, compared to your expectations, then you may have to adapt your project plan because you may consider any of these downtime optimization approaches that we focus on in the next part. Coming to the um, second part in our journey here on the downtime optimization, which downtime optimization approaches are possible. So we have three approaches that I will sketch now uh, shortly. Three approaches. The first one is the one that we call the standard approach. So if you execute the technical conversion with a software update manager, that is the standard approach. There are of course optimizations that are built in the tool, optimizations that you can apply as well. We have a slide on this there. But this is the standard approach and of course this is improved with every new SP version of the software update manager. If you experience that the downtime is too long for your project, you may consider to use downtime optimized conversion approach. This one is currently piloted. We are gaining more experience with customer projects. And uh, as a simple explanation, what we do is we move parts from the downtime to the uptime processing of the tool especially the migration and the data conversion that influence the downtime will be partially moved to uptime, so we reduce the downtime, at least partially. As third approach, we have something called near-zero downtime technology, sometimes abbreviated as NZDT. This is a consulting service approach where always SAP consulting is part of the project. And uh, we have a rough uh, comparison uh, with these three approaches. From bottom to top, you see the effort is getting higher and the costs are increasing, but the downtime can be reduced. And uh, we recommend to have the migration planning workshop together with SAP to get an understanding which approach is appropriate or is required for your project in the for the technical conversion of your SAP ERP system. We have the standard approach, of course, available for targeting SAP S4HANA 1709 and will have this available for 1809. The downtime optimized conversion approach, as I mentioned, it's a pilot approach. You can request to take part. You will get direct development support. Um, and the third one is called NZDT, service-based approach. Uh, will be available for 1809 as well. Let's have a short look on these three approaches, starting with the standard approach. You see again the picture with the blocks that influence the downtime. And if your source system is not yet running on HANA database, the migration is one portion of the downtime. And what we uh, recommend is to consider database size first, so consider archiving to reduce the source database size, that means less migration time. And for the migration as such, there are the usual recommendations how to tune this procedure. DMO, database migration option, is a part of the software update manager and there are recommendations for this. We link the blog in the SAP community where you can find details on this. There are other nodes listed here and they mainly focus on optimizing the run, partially of the conversion part of Software Update Manager and partially uh, the financial conversion that is not covered by the sum that is executed by you manually afterwards. There is, uh, for example, the possibility to scale the number of background processes to make this data conversion run faster. So some general statements on how to optimize the standard approach. If this is not sufficient, you may consider 
to apply for the downtime optimized conversion approach. And as already mentioned, the general idea is to move things from downtime to uptime. And this includes even conversion of the financial data from downtime. They will partially be executed in the uptime processing of the software update manager. Before we do this data conversion, we have to do the migration as well there. So this is moved to uptime processing as well. And of course, if we do something on the application tables in uptime, where end users are working on the system, we have to consider these changes by the end users. And this is reflected in the tool. There is a record and replay technology that will record the changes and they will be replayed later in the downtime. So, the conversion is partially moved to uptime for financial conversion, for material ledger, but as well for MMIM, the inventory management. And there are some specific tables that do not get merged into a new table, but they get field changes. So this is optimized with this approach as well. So table conversion and field conversion are moved to uptime processing. And it's even possible to say we have some big application tables. They are not affected by the new data model, but still they take migration time, downtime, and we can move them to be migrated in uptime as well. That's possible as well. And the entry point to learn more on this and to register is the SAP node listed here on the slide. That was the second approach. The third approach, again, this is called NZDT. It's a service-based approach always with SAP Consulting part of the project, a very sophisticated approach. And if you look down at this uh, 10,000 foot view there, you see blocks. What's happening is that a clone of the productive system is created and all the activities for the conversion are executed on this clone. While the end user activity on the productive system are recorded and replayed back to the clone, so that there's a, just a small downtime where the switch from the clone uh, to the clone happens then. There is an SAP node listed here as well where you find more information and can register for this. This was the overview about the downtime blocks in the technical conversion and the three approaches that we have there. Thank you for listening and back soon.